Hey everyone, welcome back to another weekly market outlook. This is for the 31st of October to the 4th of November 2022. My name is Vito Njoro. Let's quickly recap what's been going on last uh, last week. We've got the Euro, UK and US flash services and manufacturing PMI for falling across the board. All of them below 50, an indication of an economic slowdown. Uh, Australian CPI higher than expected, with Bank of Canada hiking rates by another 50 basis points. ECB, as expected, hikes rates by 75 basis points, although the ECB shows indication that future hikes could be smaller, as ECB has commented that they have done substantial progress in withdrawing monetary policy accommodation in the Eurozone. Uh, U.S. advanced quality GDP was also higher than expected, signs that the U.S. economy is still resilient despite the rate hikes done by the FOMC. We've got Bank of Japan continuing to keep the ultra-easy monetary policy and will remain so potentially into the late 2023. All right, so events this week. This is going to be an extremely volatile week of trading. We've got the Eurozone flat CPI on Monday. On Tuesday, we've got the RBA expected to continue to hike interest rates by 25 basis points, although the market is considering a return to a 50 basis point hikes following the latest Australian inflation numbers. US ISM manufacturing PMI expected to come in lower at 50 mark. Uh, services PMI on Friday expected to come in lower at 55.5. New Zealand employment numbers also expected on Wednesday. And the FOMC is expected to hike rates by 75 basis points on the 2nd of November 2022. Uh, the Bank of England is expected to hike by 75 basis points with the possibility of a full percentage hike on the 3rd of November. So the 2nd and 3rd of November is going to be your key dates for this week because we've got a lot of things going on. We've got the FOMC on the 2nd, we've got the Bank of England on the 3rd, but what's really key is that the UK government is also expected to announce an update to their monetary policy on the 3rd of November, making these two days extremely volatile days for the financial market. And then we have the NFP following that on Friday, wrapping up the week, which is also going to add more volatility into the market this week so extreme caution if you are going to be trading this week or if you're looking for new positions this week uh, do keep in mind most of the volatility is going to come in starting from the 2nd of november all right so let's take a quick look at the dollar index here this one continues to slides down uh it's currently bouncing off support from the ichimoku cloud which is around 110 uh could potentially drop down even lower towards 109. Uh, right now, we are looking if that's a possibility and that will really hinge on whatever is going on this uh, this week in the currency market. Uh, but for now, we are looking at previous support at 111, acting up as a resistance for the index uh, with 110 as the immediate support. The 10 year treasury yield, just hovering around the 4% mark. Uh, right now, we are still not within a proper retracement cycle here. We would need to see a price, uh, sorry, the treasury yield drop below 3.9% for that to happen. But for now, let's keep in mind that the 4% is going to be the pivot for the treasury, 10-year uh, treasury yield. All right, uh, with gold up next, uh, currently this is again, finding a lot of resistance at 1660. Uh, weekly resistance one is going to be coming in at 1667. Uh, in terms of the pivot, it's going to be at 1652. Potential support to the downside would be towards support one at around 1630, and that's going to be followed by 1650, 56 and 15, which was the uh, September low. So keep that in mind if you are trading gold. This is overall within a downtrend and we're still expecting more of a range more market condition this week. Uh, potential to the downside is a lot higher than it is to the upside considering where the Kijun Sen is located. It's located at around 1675 so keep that in mind if you are trading gold here. Uh, momentum is a little bit mixed up. Uh, it's currently pointing to the upside but we're not looking at price con uh, moving to the upside so we are currently looking at around 1650 as a key pivot for gold this week all right so calendar wise uh, monday pretty quiet we've got the eurozone flash cpi numbers that's going to be uh, expected to come in slightly lower at 9.9 percent for the the year-on-year -year numbers uh, from previous 10 percent 
core CPI flash estimate, which is going to be at 4.8% unchanged for the Eurozone. On Tuesday, we've got the Australian rate hike. Uh, current expectation is for a 25 basis points hike, uh, but we're not ruling out for a potential return towards that 50 basis points, considering the high uh, CPI numbers from Australia uh, last week. Okay, uh, we've got the US ISM manufacturing PMI, and then we've got the New Zealand employment numbers coming in late. Uh, it's going to be on Wednesday, New Zealand time. But the employment numbers there, uh, we are expecting unemployment rate to drop down to 3.2%. Okay, on Wednesday, ADP numbers, probably negligible at this point in time. We've got the FOMC statement uh, and the rate decision going to be in focus. 75 basis points is pretty much accounted for. Uh, we will see if there's any new feedback coming out from the press conference, if they are actually going to slow down the pace of the interest rate hikes. And that's going to be the key event for this week that's going to be on the 2nd of november 2022 3rd of november 2022 we are going to focus more on the bank of england rate decision uh, at the same time we are looking for new fiscal policy to be announced from the new uk government that's going to heavily impact on the financial market this is going to be on thursday november the 3rd on friday Obviously, we've got the NFP numbers. This is the first Friday of every month. Um, you know, NFP numbers, uh, we are looking at a smaller gain, 200,000 gain compared to 263,000 uh, last month. Unemployment rate expected to bump up a little bit higher to 3.6%, but wouldn't be a surprise if it remains unchanged at 3.5%. Okay, moving on to the technicals, we've got the Aussie USD as, the, as per previous outlook. The pair finds strong resistance at 65 cents range with emitted support at 64 cents. Considering the possibility for an extremely volatile week in the currency market, the pair could very likely initiate a range breakout this week. Uh, that range would be between 64 and 65. Uh, gauging by the range it was in last week, which is the 64 and 65 range, it's likely that resistances could be lined up at 66 cents and 67 cents. To the upside, while well, support remains at 63 cents and 62 cents to the downside. Uh, with the euro USD, the pair has broke out of the symmetrical triangle on the daily but failed to follow through with a close above 1.01, which was also the Ichimoku cloud resistance. Uh, pair remains within the Ichimoku cloud on Monday's trading and slightly below the weekly pivot and below parity following comments from the ECB that significant work has been done in terms of withdrawing monetary accommodations. Possible major trend changes are in view this week. Should the pair be able to maintain the position above 9850? Uh, and, you know, if it does close back up above 9950 or even above parity, that's going to give a stronger indication that the trend could potentially change. Uh, considering the extreme volatility in the currency market this week, failure to maintain that state level would indicate no major changes in the underlying trend. So this is currently pivoting. Uh, we are still in the dark in terms of the underlying trend it could potentially reverse to the upside but again state level like 99.50 and parity you know the market has to close above that uh for this week <clears throat> so pound news is up next uh sterling gains as the market finds comfort with rishi sunak leading the uk government with the pair maintaining a close range to the september high resistance which will be the Major level to watch out for this week, a potential trend transition has occurred with the, within the pair uh, as the pair is now trading above the Ichimoku cloud and could likely see a short pullback to test Ichimoku supports before a continued run to the upside is actually possible. Downside support is now located at 1.14, 1.12 and 1.11, all of which would still be an indication that the pair would still within be, uh, be within a normal correctional range and could validate the transition in the underlying trend. Note that the 3rd of November is an extremely volatile day for the pair as the market is expecting a 75 basis points to 100 basis points rate hike from Bank of England <clears throat> as well as the announcements of the new fiscal policy from the new government all within the same day. So it's going to be a huge, huge day, huge, huge day for Sterling on Thursday, 3rd of November. All right, dollar yen, just a quick uh, update. Nothing much has been going on with the dollar yen. The pair remains traded above the 145 key level with a likely pivot at 147.50. Resistance remains at 150. Uh, pair could remain traded close to pivot, awaiting the FOMC rate decision and US NFP numbers this week. 
The pair is also expected to remain traded within the 145-150 range this week as the market remains cautious of a potential uh, Ministry of Finance uh, in Japan potential intervention again should the pair move higher than the key 150 level. So just a quick reminder again that this is going to be an extremely volatile week, especially starting from the 2nd of November all the way to the 4th of November. So be a little bit more cautious with your trading. Expect huge volatility in the market, especially on Thursday. <coughs> so, um, other than that, good luck to your trades and I'll see you soon.